The Australian-New Zealand Chamber of Commerce in Taipei has released its third discussion paper on trade with Taiwan, revealing plans for several trade and business-related improvements. The paper touches on topics including energy costs and development, and issues related to living and doing business in Taiwan. FTV reporter Stephanie Yang has the details. Relations between Taiwan, Australia and New Zealand have warmed considerably over 2022 as trade and investment between the three countries reached record highs. According to the Australian-New Zealand Chamber of Commerce, bilateral trade in the period between January and August was 83 percent higher than in the same period in 2021. In addition, Taiwan is Australia's fifth largest export market and more than 2,300 Australian companies trade with Taiwan. In the past year, uh, bilateral trade and investment between our three countries continue to reach new record highs with the um, uh, preceding this uh, year on uh, on the year uh, year on year increase. We are now we are now seeing our uh, many Australian and New Zealand business uh, seriously considering Taiwan as an opportunity. This is also reflected in the chambers. Uh, we have a 36 percent increase in our corporate members since last year. Australia and Taiwan share rich indigenous histories, open diverse societies, strong people-to-people -people links, and an interest in an open, inclusive, resilient and prosperous Indo-Pacific. Our economic relationship is at a historic high with over 32 billion Australian dollars in two-way trade and 35 billion Australian dollars in two-way investment. In fact, Taiwan is Australia's fifth largest goods export market and seventh largest merchandise trading partner overall. The Australia-New Zealand Chamber of Commerce in Taipei recently released its 2022 discussion paper. This year's paper focuses on continued efforts to promote Taiwan's participation in the Comprehensive and Progressive Agreement for Trans-Pacific Partnership, as well as on development of geothermal energy, offshore wind power, e-commerce, and medical strategic resources. Members from several committees of the chamber have expressed their challenges and provided recommendations in the discussion paper. The first recommendation related to the implications of Taiwan energy price. Over the last two years, the impact of COVID-19, uh, I guess everybody uh, are aware of that uh, COVID-19 have significantly pushed up the prices of raw material, transportation costs and labor costs. However, the increased costs were not properly reflected in FIT mechanism for renewable energy sector. Therefore, it is recommended the actual cost of procuring and delivering energy um, is to be in Taiwan should be properly reflected and acknowledged in the agreement. The paper also features obstacles faced when doing business and living in Taiwan. Those challenges include issues related to international schools and setting up business entities and bank accounts. The first challenge relating to the, to the insufficient international school numbers in Taiwan. Compared to other countries in the region, Taiwan has relatively low number of international schools, and those schools are typically with a long waiting list. The second challenge relates to the long lead time for setting up business uh, and bank account in Taiwan for a foreign business or foreign entity. The lead time typically in Taiwan to set up an entity and also for a bank account is probably around five to six months. A copy of the report was handed to the National Development Council Minister, Gong Mingxing, who responded to the points in the report and talked about the areas of cooperation where he sees the most potential between the three countries in the future. He said he looked forward to furthering cooperation in the energy sector. When Taiwan launched an energy transformation program in 2016, Australia invested a lot in Taiwan. Taiwan hopes to reach net zero carbon emissions by 2050. This gives us ample room for new opportunities for cooperation between Taiwan, New Zealand and Australia. In the past, it was investments in solar power and offshore wind power, and now there's hydrogen power and also geothermal hydrogen power. The three countries hope to continue to work together to strengthen their ties. FTV reporter Stephanie Yang and Liang Junle in Taipei.